Hey folks, Techniverse here. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, but stick around because today we're going to be talking about some pretty interesting stuff I don't think you're going to want to miss. Alright folks, Technivorous is here and back with another new edition of Kira. Now this is Kira 4.9.1. Normally when you see that third digit in there, it is indicative of a hotfix or them fixing bugs in the last update. So let's jump in here and see what's in the what's new section. It looks like they have some stuff listed under Ultimaker PETG profiles. And a few more things. So the digital library, that's another thing that works specifically with their printers. That's actually a really, really cool tool. I wish they would incorporate with everything else. Um, you're seeing the Z seam here. These are all basically features that were shown in 4.9. So it's not really showing the bug fixes. So let's go ahead and jump over to here. All right, so here it is. The PETG profile update, that is the big thing. And it's a generic PETG profile for uh, 1.75 that they added, but the 2.85 millimeter has also been updated. The bug fixes are some pretty big ones, actually. The second extruder should now prime properly again when using prime blob. Apparently, people were having issues with using two extruders. That's nice because I'm going to be running into that here pretty soon. We're getting a, a two in one, and I'm running a Chimera. So we're kind of dealing with that. It'll be nice to see how well that, that fix works. So also reduce the flood of QML errors in the log file contributed by field of view. Uh, at this point, most of the features that are, are upgrade features in my opinion are contributed by field of view. So he's uh, an amazing guy. Fixed crash when entering layer view on Mac OS. I don't have a Mac, so I haven't run into that, but I could see that being very, very frustrating and fixed a crash when there was an inaccessible X drive in Windows. Kira should no longer try to access the X drive now. So a um, couple minor bug fixes that uh, if you're using a second extruder that that second extruder prime properly, that's, uh, that's a big one. So let's go in and just in case you haven't seen this new feature here, I'm gonna go ahead and we'll just grab something simple and small. Oh, small, yeah, right. Uh, this is an earring that I print on a resin printer. We'll take it down a notch because we don't need to waste all that slice time. Basically what I want to do here is show you the new layer line mode that came out in 4.9 and the seam visualization. So you can see here this white line, that is the seam. You can see this model is actually quite a bit smaller than my model is playing around with some settings. I should probably fix that one millimeter horizontal expansion. Uh, I had a viewer asking me how to make a cookie cutter thinner without altering the geometry of the model. So we were we were talking about horizontal expansion and how it works on holes. And um, I don't want to leave it there. I want that's normally where I have it. Negative 0.4 or 0.8, just to make things fit a little bit better if they're tight fitting objects. Um, and this is why I print this model on a resin printer as well. But it's also a good visualization of the scene. You can see here. Um, layer view is the default type now. You can also go into x-ray view. Doesn't really give you much information in x-ray view unless you're working with multiple objects and you want to see how they're going to interact inside, which these two items work very well for. But uh, basically, this line is where it starts and finishes every layer and it will leave a visible seam there. It's nice to have this visualization because you can tell where it's going to be and I can alter that by going to Let's see, if you're ever looking for a setting, you can just type it in right here. So Z seam alignment shortest, and it's on smart hiding. I can do random, which will scatter that around and leave less of a visible line, but we'll leave a few more zits on a couple of the other edges. You can see now it's scattered all the way around. Um, the best thing to do is usually sharpest corner because you won't really see it. It'll either put it back where it was or it'll put it on this edge here, yeah. so. Um, you can kind of play around with that and see where you can hide it on your model. Some objects it's really easy to hide it underneath or inside or on the back of things. So very, very handy visualization tool. I would also note that if I were to start printing this with the expansion set to it as being such a small object, it probably wouldn't print properly because it doesn't have a bottom. So 
Um, let's go ahead and wrap this video up, guys. I do have a series called Kira Settings in Five Minutes or Less. I will put a link to that up in the corner if you'd like to see more on how to deal with these settings and how to use them. This is basically just a quick update video on Kira 4.9.1. I hope it was helpful. And honestly, unless you're using a dual extruder at this point, I wouldn't recommend downloading this update. It won't be too long before Kira 5.0 comes out, and that should have Arachne in it, which is going to be a big change. If you do download the update, as always, keep your old version of Kira. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and leave a like on this video to be notified when there are more future updates to Kira. We like to make these videos every time they release one and just check out the new features and see what's changed. So leave me a comment to let me know if there are any features that you're specifically curious about. That's going to be it, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Stick around guys, I got another YouTube recommended video for you right here, and if you haven't already, subscribe, 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 make sure that you smash that like button. We'll see you in the next one, Technivorous out.